Hey everybody, it's XS Master X. Welcome back to the long-awaited next episode of Sonic Adventure DX. For real quick, I don't actually know how far this recording session is going to go because I seem to be having some weird video glitches with my Dazzle or OBS or something. I don't know exactly what's causing the problem, but I'm going to hope and pray that it doesn't cause me huge problems during this session. If it does, I'll have to scrap it very quickly in. Alright, so you might have noticed that uh, the game for some reason like skipped the first cutscene. Probably because I was messing around with this and opened the file up. And so I don't know how to fix that. Let's talk to these people. Oh, so you're that guy from the plane crash. Are you really okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Yep, this is it. Sunny days, clear skies. This is what summer vacation is all about. Yep, sure is. Alright, so, sounds like this story in many ways mirrors Sonic's stories for the most part. But if you pay close attention to the cutscenes, you might notice some subtle changes from the cutscenes in Sonic's story. But anyway, for now, let's just get along to Mystic Ruins. Actually, I'm trying to think if there's anything I can do here already. I think there are a couple things I can find. If you come into here, you know how you, you couldn't really do anything here as Sonic? It's Tails, he you can fly. So you can come up here, and go through this doorway, and get this. Look, it's your jet anklet. It's jet power makes you fly faster. Yep, and that'll come in handy. Considering that, well, we'll get to that in a minute. So yeah, that's something easy you can find right off the bat. Uh... This is the wrong way to go, apparently. Yeah, I somehow got turned around in there. Uh, police have this blocked off, and Tails can't just fly over it because he's a law-abiding citizen. So, anyway, nothing left to do but go to Mystic Ruins for now. And I'm watching the video preview on OBS like a hawk because I'm worried that's going to mess up. N normally, this probably wouldn't get that emblem, but I found a way to do it as Sonic already, so we're good. Anyways, let's get off to Mystic Ruins. Alright. And now, like in Sonic Story, we come over here. Well, well, well. If it isn't Sonic and Tails. It's Eggman! Pilot! Oh, I am Dr. Robotnik, the most cunning scientific genius in the world! Yeah, right, Dr. Eggman. Enough! I do not but now it's time to put it to work! That usually means trouble coming from you! Don't be too bad to be worse. Give me that chaos emerald or else! Or else what, huh? Or else I'll take it from you to the hard way!
Alright, and now we have Tails' version of the Egg Hornet fight to do. So yeah, if you haven't picked up on it, the cutscenes go mostly the same way, except they reframe it slightly so that it looks like Tails has a slightly bigger role. Anyways, this fight this fight's actually a lot easier as Tails. Really, Tails' story is pretty easy for the most part. For right away, in most Sonic games, this seems to be the case for some reason, but Tails tends to be really overpowered because he can fly, and that solves a lot of his problems for him. He also has the tail attack, which can sometimes be a more intuitive uh, uh, physical attack than Sonic's homing attack. But in that, it didn't actually work there, so I'm going to go ahead and just use the jump move. Anyways, Tails' power of flight makes avoiding these missiles super easy, which is the main reason why it's easier in this story. I am in fact going to get away with this. Yeah, for some reason both Sonic Adventures have this thing where most of the bosses are like, piss easy. Like, this is actually one of the harder bosses in Sonic Adventure 1. <laughs> like, other than, like, there's also, like, Chaos 4, which is pretty hard. But, most, and then the final bosses of each story are pretty hard. But a lot of them are just... not. Which I'm not going to complain about. Right now. Uh oh, uh oh, hold on. Video freaked out a little bit during that. That's exactly what I was afraid of happening. It seems, the video seems to be okay like 90% of the time. I don't, gosh, I don't know what to do about that. If it's bad, to the, I might have to just replay everything I've done on emulator and switch to Let's Play over to that. That'd be inconvenient, but it's better than having, and also it's only happening with this game. I didn't, I was just recording Road Trip and I had absolutely no problems with the video that I could see in that one. And also... I don't... Once again, I don't know if the problem is... The Dazzle, or if it is my recording software. Which I'm using OBS for right now. But anyways... Let's see here, do, I guess I still have to find the Windstone in this. And tells the story. Yeah, it seems to only really like it when there's a lot of like bright flashing lights in the screen at once. Okay, here we go. It's exactly. 
Excuse me, if you could move it out of the way. The, the design must mean something. So yeah, we've already kind of seen this before, but... So here's the wrinkle with Tales of Story compared to the Sonics. It's mostly just retread, but there is one difference. And that is that every single one of Tales... Or most of Tales of uh, Levels are races in which he races with Sonic or someone else. And except it's super easy to beat Sonic because Sonic can't fly and you can just fly over literally everything as Tails. So yeah, that's that's the twist. And there's a few little things added into the level like that for Tails' uh, benefit. So I'm gonna see how many of them I can get. Because they really... I don't know if Sonic has rubber band or not. i assuming he prop He does. Because he seems to be catching up with me despite me using a ton of shortcuts. But I don't actually know. Alright, you know, I don't even need those rings. I can literally just do this. You can already kind of do stuff shenanigans like this with Sonic. But Tails makes it even easier to do so. Because there's much less risk to it. Yeah, Sonic is rubber banding if you saw it. Or either that or he was just going. Uh, thing. I don't know. That wasn't too bad. No, it wasn't. The train headed for Station Square will be departing soon. Alright, and. In Sonic Story, next level is Casinopolis. Casinopolis. So I'm gonna go ahead and head off there. Didn't I? Get, I'm pretty sure at some point in Sonic Story I got like lost. So hopefully that doesn't happen again. It probably will. I'm not very smart some days. Yeah, it's night time, and it's time to go gambling. But, in Tails' case, it's pretty easy to hit this button, because you can just do that. Also, while I'm here, before I forget, here's an emblem which we couldn't get a Sonic. I think I have most of these field emblems locations memorized. I might miss one or two, but I can... If I miss any, I'll use a guide once I'm done with everyone's story and find them. I have a pretty good idea of where most of them are. So... Thankfully, in Tails' version of Casinoopolis, you don't actually have to do the whole, like, s slot machine thing that took up, like, way too much time. You just have to do the garbage disposal part. It almost is sort of like the easy version of Sonic Story in many ways. We can still pick up a ton of rings, so that's, that's cool. Hey Sonic, how about you shut up? I don't really care about what you think. Yeah. All right, so that was that was very easy. I honestly, I'm expecting to be able. I might be underestimating how long this story takes. But I'm expecting to be able to actually get this all done in one recording session. There are a couple of hard parts to tell the story, though. I'm not. I don't want to talk it down too much.
What happened to the Chaos Emerald? Ah, uh, Eggman got one of them. But the other one's safe. He must be getting desperate. Now the Emerald Count is two to one and Eggman's winning. Let's get a move on! And there's Cream the Rabbit. Let's go. Now that I have Tails, I can actually show this in greater detail, but she she kind of is a sprite. Uh, but it's she exists. And anyway, so let's go on to Ice Cap. Yeah, I don't. I probably mentioned this because. Surprisingly, this Let's Play has been going on since 2016 and just progressing extremely slowly. And I probably mentioned this at some intervening point during that, but I've always headcanoned that Sonic likes to keep stuff just stored in his spines in the back of the back of his head. I don't know. I always just assumed that, but I don't think there's any canon indication of that. The key is floating. Thank you, Tails. Uh, is there anything down here? No? Okay. And here we go, the ice cap. One word. Uh, like with Casinopolis, a lot of this level is also edited out for Tails' story. You just have to do the snowboarding part. Which is admittedly probably one of the harder missions in this, just because the snowboarding, you can't cheat, totally cheese, like you can every other level. But it's not too bad. So yeah, uh, with Sonic characters it always seems like there's some that people get very attached to, and personally I've always liked Tails. Um, I don't, I don't know why, but I think it's just because, at least in the early, at least in these games, he's very, he's just very like, sort of sweet-tempered. As opposed to like, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. And he's also like pretty much supposed to be like the cute and cuddly like sidekick character. And he does fit that role. But he also, he's kind of slowly became, over the series progression, more and more of like the smart guy mechanist. Which, he, you can see a little bit of that in this game. Uh, but it becomes even more pronounced in Sonic Adventure 2 and onward. But like all the other Sonic characters, Tails' personality tends to differ from the game to game. And in the more recent games, he's actually kind of become more of like a, like a, I'm trying to think of how to explain it, but like sort of like a arrogant character. Like, not, su not like, to Eggman's levels, but just a little bit more in that direction. And he's like, tends to be more snarky with Sonic, and be all like, My tech skills can handle this new problem. And I don't really like that change, personally. I like Tails just being Sonic's cute, nice sidekick. And here's Knuckles. So this one's even easier than Sonic's version, because literally all you have to do is just do this. Oh no! Yeah, one thing I'll give... well, I'll talk in a minute. Oh 
Alright, now back on to the one hard boss fight in the whole game. No, that's, that's not true, but probably the hardest one that's not a final boss, uh, in my opinion. Maybe Chaos 6 could like give us some competition? But anyway, I'll stop talking about that now. So, actually, no, no I'm not. I, I have another point to bring up, uh, which is that uh, the boss fights in this game that suffer the most from just being incredibly easy are the character boss fights. Like, uh... The versus Knuckles one is pathetic. The versus Gamma one is pretty easy. Like, this is something which Sonic Adventure 2 also has, but to a lesser extent. In Sonic Adventure 2, the, bo the ca versus character boss fights are usually really easy. Though every now and then they... Well, Near the end of the game they get harder, but the, the first few ones are really easy. But you still at least have to put some thought into them. <laughs> For this game, it's really just, oh no, oh no, oh no, and you're done. So yeah, you may have noticed that in Sonic Story, it took me four episodes to get this far. And granted that was back when I was making shorter videos, but still. This is probably like the length of one of my videos from back in the day, and I'm already here. And then again, I did do a lot of Chow Garden stuff intermediate uh, to that, but there's also a lot of time saved just by uh, those levels being shorter, and me not needing to explore as much because I've already kind of done a lot of that. Alright, and there goes Chaos 4. Once again, easier when you can fly around and dodge his attacks. I'm gonna try and at least provide some commentary that isn't just, oh, it's easy. All right, I I took the time during the cutscene to go use the restroom. 
So yeah, that was a thing. Let's chase after him. You kinda... Eventually it does diverge from Sonic's story. But not yet. First, we have to do yet another terrible plane mission. So here we're doing this again. I think I probably expressed previously that I'm not a huge fan of these missions. But thankfully you don't have to do them in any of the other stories, so this is gonna be the last time. I gotta say, I actually own the soundtrack to this game. Actually, I think I've already mentioned that. Crap. Quit think of something Sonic related I haven't mentioned yet. Uh, uh, oh. In between this uh, recording session and the last one, in which I finished up Sonic's mission mode, I've actually played uh, played some of uh, a later game in this franchise, Shadow the Hedgehog, and that game kind of sucks. I think that's not exactly a hot take, but I was just, I don't remember why, but... Oh, that's right, it's because Backloggery said that it's the next game I should play. And so I decided to ch try it out. And I ended up in the final level. The game has a lot of problems. But the final level of uh, uh, slightly, the slightly hero story in that game is like literally like the worst. Also, both of the levels that take place on the Space Colony arc are terrible. They're so boring. Especially if you're doing like the, even if you're just doing a neutral mission, uh, they're they're not good. There are some other there are other levels in that game which are pretty good though. But it just the ones that are bad are really bad. And it can so I actually ended up quitting. I think it's called like. I don't remember what the level's called, but the one that's the last one in Slightly Hero Story. Um, that one actually made me quit the game. So yeah, that's the thing that happened. Yay! Whoops.
that dream brought back memories. I owe so much to Sonic. Sonic! Hmm, wonder where he went. Sure hope he's alright. The tornado's not powerful enough. If I'm going to get that egg carrier, I need to finish my prototype. It needs a Chaos Emerald to work! Looks like I'd better find one fast! Yep, that's true. So that uh, cutscene brings to mind... Uh, One of the main parts of Tails' character, which is that he, or at least in like this part of the franchise, which is that he's sort of like a fanboy of Sonic, or at least he started off as one. Um, of course, he, he now is actually working alongside him and like helping him, but I'm pretty sure in like Sonic, what, I can't stand on this, really? I'm pretty sure on Sonic the Hedgehog t 2, uh, he was supposed to just be some sort of, like, fan of Sonic who was following him around. At least that's how I always, like, interpreted it. I don't know, it's hard to ascribe plot elements to that game. Did I already get this? Yeah, I did. I th it took me, like, an hour to get it, but I did it. And... I thought there was supposed to be a field emblem up here, which is why I came over here, but I guess there's not, so whatever. Yeah. However, a lot of people in the earlier games actually found Tails really annoying, because basically he, his role in, the, in Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and to some extent like 3 and Knuckles, was he'd just follow Sonic around, and he'd occasionally help out, but mostly he'd just kind of run into enemies and die. And so that led to a lot of people kind of like hating him, based on the classic games. Uh, I don't know, it's just very interesting. <laughs> I've been a Sonic fan of so long, I've seen some really just weird things surrounding- Okay, where is this? I'm going the wrong way. I've seen just a, a lot of weird things which bring out really strong tensions in people who like the franchise, and that's one of them. Uh, like, one of the common, like, things that people in the fandom would kind of say to make fun of Tails, which it was that he's... Oh wait, hold on, get, uh... So that was the thing that happened. Anyways, if you're Tails, you can actually fly up here and push that button, which lets you go down here. Go in, go in. Okay. Anyway, one of the things back in the day which people would say to make fun of Tails because they hated him so much because he died a lot was that he's gay. And. Honestly, I can kind of understand where this came from, because he has this, like, adoration of Sonic, which sort of, in some ways, mimics Amy's a little bit. And then he also has, like, a high, the high, highest pitched voice of, of, like, the male cast, and, like, just a few other, like, minor things like that kind of go into that, I think. Of course, the reason why Tails is the most, like, has the voice that he does in actuality is because he's supposed to be younger than the, in most of the cast. He's eight, whereas Sonic is supposed to be like 15. Not like the ages really matter, but still, he's technically supposed to be eight, making him like the second youngest of uh, of the main Sonic characters, only after Cream and Charmy. I guess that's making him the third, but whatever. I forget. I forgot that Charmy existed. And so, and this was also back in the day when just seeing that someone was gay was like seeing it, 
enough of like a explanation to be considered an insult. That doesn't really fly now because it's not considered a bad thing, but it was in like the 2000s. And so I should, I should, yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm, I try to at least stay quiet for the cutscenes. Uh, so we're back in this place. I think there's something I need to find here. Let me see if I can find it. But yeah. But all of that sort of reputation that Tails garnered led uh, a particular... This is just a weird... This is a really weird, like, anecdotal story, but I want, I, I want to tell it just because, like, it has to survive in some form. Uh... One, like, incensed Tails fan was tired of people saying this, so he made, like, a Sonic fan page on Facebook that was called, like, Tails from the Sonic series is not in all caps gay, or something like that. Anyway, I got a new item. And that means you can do this, which is really fun. Anyway, so he had this whole page devoted to this concept. And then, like, one day, this the dude who owned this, uh, like, this Facebook page actually found out that, like, his own, like, older brother was gay. <laughs> and, and then, so, like, he, he went on the page and he told this story about, like, he, he and his brother, like, had to, like, live in a car and, like, crisscross, like, the nation. Do I go in here? No. And just kind of, like, live on their own. And how it's made him like rethink, think a lot of his like beliefs. It's just like, I don't know. <laughs> I just found that to be a, it's a sad story, but it's also interesting. If I can find like a link to that, I'll link it in the description. But anyways, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing in this place. Uh, no, they're not supposed to go over here. I don't think you're supposed to be here for that long, just based on the very repetitive background music. What am I supposed to do? Do I talk to this guy? Right, okay, yeah. No, I think I have to go backwards, actually. I think I have to go out here. No? Okay, apparently I don't go to the Emerald Shrine then. Unless there is somewhere I go and I just missed it. And so I like... I like just the amount of detail they put into this area. It looks very nice. For 2000... And actually, no, this was released in like 1998, originally. And this is like the remastered version that was released in 2004, so... I don't know if it's nice by 2004 standards, but it's definitely nice by 1998 standards. <laughs> Alright, where is this stupid cutscene I'm supposed to trigger? And I ran into a tree. You can do that. Oh, in front of the shrine. In front of the shrine? Wait, but I was just there. I'm confused. Do I have to talk to that guy to trigger that? Because that... I hope not, because that'd be kind of stupid. Uh... That better not be... What else supposed to do? But I guess I better check. Cause, oh, just talk to that one random echidna who says he calls in front of the shrine, and then and then you go to the shrine. You have to do that first, though. Unless he wasn't talking about the Master Emerald Shrine, he was talking about this one of these various uh, 
constructions, which could, some of which of which could technically be considered shrines. I'm pretty sure like these, uh, the Echidna tribe is supposed to be. Oh, oh, they meant this shrine. Well, that was cryptic. <laughs> 